Hi guys, I'm so thankful to be here. I'm coming from Grand Rapids in West Michigan and coming over here and you know, our prize and all that fun stuff. How many people here saw the Grand Rapids lift of the American Pie lift up? So that's probably what I'm best known for, but I think that with my story I can kind of help show you guys a lot of stuff that we can do with young people and how we can take people who are creative, young folks in the area and help them get involved with the area. And I think the best way that I can do that is through teaching my story and you know what I was able to do because I come from very, very humble beginnings and I'm going to show all that in a second so I'm just going to get right into my story and hopefully you know we can learn some things along the way. So. This happened in 2009. What I did was I took downtown Grand Rapids and I launched 100,000 paper airplanes off of the roofs of about eight different buildings downtown. Each building had its own color and then I had everyone come in the middle of the streets and play one big giant melody together. This was during Art Prize 2009 as an entry. Uh, over 30,000 people, the largest crowd since JFK campaigned here in 1960, came out for this event. Um, and I have some photos that we took from the rooftops. Every single one, that's a street that you can see. That's probably our biggest street, Monroe Avenue, and the street lights and all the people. And so that's the opposite view looking the other way. I may have some more photos over here. So that's. All those people that came to, you know, see this big, you know, crazy art event, you know, it took maybe $4,000 to put on, um, didn't spend any money on advertising, it was all through Facebook, I didn't um, work for any specific company, uh, it was, you know, in a city that does, it's not, you know, a New York City or something where we have tons and tons of people, I mean, you can do the math, 30,000 out of 200,000 people, <laughs> a lot of people that had to come and attend this. But I wanted to show you why, you know, how we were able to get to this uh, position that's Monroe Avenue once again. And so I wanted to show you, you know, how, you know, I was able to go from this part to this part and now being able to do this and how you could find people, you know, like me, how we could get other people in Detroit and other areas to, you know, be able to do similar things because I, you know, had, like I said, very meager beginnings. I, you know, my parents worked in box factories. I don't, there's no wealth in my family. Um, I didn't, you know, come from anywhere of power or anything in the city. I was just, you know, a kid who had some ideas, you know, what would it look like if we launched 100,000 paper airplanes? I wanted to genuinely know, and so I had to work to find out what the heck that works like. So I started in the most bare sense. Uh, this is actually myself on the right, um, and this takes some explaining, obviously. Uh, I, there's a game that's played at Western Michigan University where people reenact a zombie outbreak with Nerf guns. I thought it was, you know, the craziest, most fun thing ever, and it's over a course of a week with thousands of people, and I was like, wow, this sounds like a ton of fun, because for me, in West Michigan, I oftentimes felt a lot of behind the times, I guess. You know, over in, you know, West Michigan, we'll have, gosh, what came uh, recently, like a Krispy Kreme or something, we'll come to town, we'll be like, oh my gosh, so excited. <laughs> But that's what it's like because you don't have all those things. Well, you know, someone on the East Coast would be like, oh, that, that happened forever ago. You're so behind. So this was, you know, my effort to try and, you know, even if it's selfishly just so I can attend it, you know, come and put these things on and, you know, have fun in the area and do something that sounds a little bit more flash mobby um, uh, area of the East Coast and things like that, and doing something like that in, you know, Bland Rapids or whatever, you, you know, some people want to call it if they don't like the area. So, you know, this grew, and, you know, I was like 18, I had like a 2.5 GPA, I was the super apathetic, didn't care, I ended up going to community college for music, because, you know, I'm a creative guy, but, you know, I, I was very apathetic, I didn't know where I wanted to go, and I didn't really have any leaders or people that could show me you know, where I could go or how to take me from that and, you know, see, you know, where I am today. So this was my first attempt at, you know, trying to do something. It sounds, you know, really lame and silly now, but to think of that this is where, you know, it all came from. And a lot of times, and I'm going to help kind of show you, but it was a lot of people in uh, positions of power, whether it be the government or the businesses that helped to foster this, and allowed me to do things that, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to do. 
Uh, so back to my story, you know, I'm doing this, I called it Zomb, and it was from June 2007, 2008. We look really cool there. If there was a light, we'd look like a bunch of nerds, super lame, not cool at all. <laughs> but, you know, this was, you know, a lot of fun, and it started with just 17 kids in a public park after dark reenacting a zombie outbreak, um, just running around tackling each other like... It's very, very dumb. Technically illegal, even. But, you know, we, but, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, we, you know, we're growing and, you know, we had more people um, involved with this. And so this was, you know, my first experience trying to do something in the area, even if, you know, it had no effect on anything, no 30,000 people in the streets or anything. It was just, you know, me trying to do something, you know, even if it was just so I could participate. You know, it was me trying to uh, incorporate and, and, and do something that would be, you know, neat, I guess. You know, and this grew, and we did a lot of other stuff, and I started, I moved to the downtown area and out of the suburbs. You know, we started having actually, you know, a lot of people attending this, and I had to be a, a leader, I guess. And for me as a, you know, super shy, awkward 18-year-old, that was kind of difficult, and I had to, you know, learn to do this. So we have all these kids now that are here and attending this, you know, and I'm moving downtown and I start to see a lot of things like the improv everywhere guys are doing some really cool stuff and they're doing, you know, the freeze and um, Central Station and all that at the time. I'm like, wow, like I would do anything to, you know, be out there, but here I am stuck in Grand Rapids. And so, you know, how can we take that and bring that here? Um, so the first thing that I thought was like, you know, what if we had a huge pillow fight. That would be so, so, so fun. This was September 2008. It was just, a, it was a thousand people for like 15 minutes. Um, I prayed, um, I, I didn't really do much of anything other than, you know, just invite my f friends through Facebook. And that, you know, there's a lot to be said there about how now we're able to take our ideas and bypass um, any kind of needing corporations that can buy lots of media buys that we can simply now let ideas run themselves and, it, and that's what's going to have to sell it at the end of the day. So I was like, you know, I'm sitting there on Facebook and I'm about to create the event. I'm like, it's going to be really stupid. No one's going to like it. Like, it's going to be really awkward. It'll be me and five homeless looking dudes. I'm just going to leave and just, just get out and just feel like I just failed in front of everybody. But it was like, you know, I'll try it. You know, maybe it'll go over well. Uh, so I, I gave it a shot, and I had 35,000 invitations uh, sent out through Facebook of someone being like, hey, that's kind of cool, hey, that's kind of cool, and kind of just spreading out through, you know, that medium. And I didn't have, the media didn't cover it all until the day that it happened. And, you know, and this is a funny story, but what happened was this was a time period where the city of Grand Rapids had the ability to shut this down because I didn't, I was like, I'll just do it in Rosa Park Circle. It doesn't matter. No one's going to want to talk to me, the police, or maybe the people who own the venue or something like that, which is the city of Grand Rapids. And, you know, someone talked to me and they were like, you have to, you know, talk to the city. You have to have that conversation with them. You know, and they, were, they had some concerns. You know, what if someone puts a rock in a pill? You know, stuff like that. You know, what about insurance and things like that? But the city has, you know, uh, an ability to have a grant of $1,000 to pay for some of those costs. Now, I don't know if uh, any of you remembered, but maybe if you guys remember, there was a time when Detroit tried to do a pillow fight that was shut down by the riot police, apparently. I remember the conversations, um, and, and that's, and you know, they had some legitimate issues, you know, who's going to pick it up? There were some signs of that, but what happened was Grand Rapids had a culture that allowed me to be successful, and even if it was a crazy idea that had never happened before, and you know, maybe there were some concerns, they were willing to work with me to help make this happen instead of just saying no, which is what could have happened. I could have never done the lipped up video that, you know, got four million plus views and was worth millions of dollars to the city of Grand Rapids or bringing out tens of over, you know, 100,000 combined attendance and all the economic impact of that. Could have skipped all that if they simply said no and didn't allow me to do what they did. But they allowed me to bend the rules so that we could do something unique and creative and say, we'll let you do that and we'll, you know, help mold that instead of, you know, just cutting it off because 
that's what creative people like to do. They like to take things and just bend them ever so slightly into the way that they see fit. I did some other things as well moving on through this, and this is where I really started to push the uh, <laughs> patience of the city. I did, oh, and I'm going to show you some fun photos. Uh, all color coordinated. People were actually too into it. That is me. And then I blew an air horn, and then I almost died. And <laughs> I, I'm somewhere in that midst of all those people. Um, but we're going to move on. And, and you know, this did you know, end up getting a lot of attention for the area. I believe it was on the front page of CNN.com. Uh, it was featured on Inside Edition as well. Uh, and you can see some of it there. And it you know, was something that this could have never happened before. You know, so then I was like, you know what, okay, this is crazy, this is fun, you know, it's October, let's do a zombie walk. You know, I've seen a lot of other ones, maybe we could do the biggest one, and I remember working with the city, I'm like, oh, we'll just keep it on the sidewalks when we walk. But then like 5,000 people came, <laughs> and it was like, this isn't really going to work. So I have like a map of downtown, and I'm like, I'll shut down this street, and I'll shut down this street, and I have like the lieutenants calling me like, you must stand down, and like just, just crazy <laughs> voicemails. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun, you know? And so they allowed me to do a lot of that stuff and keep, you know, moving forward. And I'm going to have to push through this a little bit uh, as I only have four minutes left. And so I'm going to run through this. But some fun photos of that was featured on Discovery Channel. Once again, though, the city allows me to be creative, have fun, even if it's, you know, difficult, if it requires reimagining what the downtown can look like through the creative young people and allowing them to be successful. I tried to do other things. Uh, notably, I did a Santa event. I thought it would be a great idea to dress like Santa and hand out candy. 65 people came out because it's freezing cold, and why would you want to give away your stuff for free to people who don't want it? <laughs> Good question. I should have asked myself this. I had a lot to learn. You know, we did other things, and we, you know, tried to reimagine, you know, what can a downtown look like, and the city continued. You know, I remember I gave away you know, 30,000 pieces of sidewalk chalk and invited everyone to just chalk wherever, you know. Obviously, a lot of the old garden downtown had things like, oh, everyone's just going to spray paint everywhere. It's, no, they're not. They're just going to take sidewalk chalk and, you know, color off this entire downtown area. But it was another way that we could look at the area and see a new light, that we could allow young people to have their creative visions and help, you know, put them together. I started getting sponsorships um, from businesses to help me pay for these things, as for the most part, they were um, coming out of my own pocket. And so we did other things. I did a 4th of July water balloon fight, which was reenacting a revolutionary war with water balloons. And it didn't make sense, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so we did that for July. And I'm going to, like I said, continue to move through some of the stuff. You guys have a fantastic uh, Detroit Electronic Music Festival. Uh, pretty, pretty fantastic. I didn't have anything like that out there, so I had to try and do my own thing. Um, which was this electronic music night, you know, and we got to the paper airplane event, which was, you know, me going to real estate businesses and being like, sir, you don't know me, but let me put, you know, 20 strangers on your ledges and throw something off of them, like on the thousands of people as they look up and pointy things come down and just be okay with it. <laughs> just, just work with me. And that's, you know, what I had to do is I had to work through this and get people to understand that, you know, this stuff is possible, that we can take a downtown and see it in a new way. Even if it doesn't quite make sense to you, just work with me. And that culture is what has allowed me to continue to do things. You know, they sold all those restaurants. Can you imagine after those people said it's time to pack up and go, all the restaurants, they were running out of food and having drivers, you know, go over a minute uh, sorry, over an hour out to try and find more food because all the restaurants were running out of food. We did more things. We did another electronic music night. You know, we did more reimagining of downtown, built a 500-foot uh, water slide um, in the downtown area. Uh, you know, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's actually my street. And I was walking. I've walked that hill so many times. I remember just walking up it, and it's like, this is a really steep hill, and I'm just out of breath and sweating. I'm like, there's got to be something we can do with it. So, you know, we raised the money, and we put it together, you know, to pay for putting on something like this. And then I only have 40 seconds. 
So lastly, though, we were able to accomplish the Grand Rapids Lift Up video. And I had never been involved with video before, so this was brand new to me to try and do this. But, you know, seeing, you know, uh, Newsweek saying that we're a dying city and trying to take the area and respond to that and be like, no, you know, this area can be absolutely fantastic and we're going to show you how. And young people, you know, are going to have their ideas and we're going to work together. Businesses are going to sponsor it. Downtown's going to allow us to shut down all these streets so we can show all these roads and get four million views, endless worldwide coverage and, you know, the worth of millions of dollars, all because good people allowed us to bend the rules to make wonderful creative things happen. So that's all my time. Thanks for having me. Rob, Rob. Awesome talk, but you know, how, how do you win those people over? Do you, have, do you have three things that we can do here in Detroit to start doing these big, uh, it, it seems like the creators and, and the cities are often fighting with each other. How do you win them over? It's tough. I think at the end of the day, you just have to have good ideas. You know, it doesn't matter who's doing it or how cool they are or influential or whatever. It has to simply be, you know, that the ideas themselves are interesting, that people would want to run with it. And then having that kind of understanding culture where, you know, you take something that's very little and just, you know, having understanding aspects to it and letting, you know, the old guard, quote unquote, kind of allow us to do things and, you know, just be understanding. I guess it's just a culture that, you know, starts with small things here and there and building up in meetings and working with people and just allowing, you know, creative things to happen. Well, keep creating. You inspire all of us. And he's 22 years old, which really... <laughs>